Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Welcome back from the Washington Examiner. Video shows leftist mob harassing and attacking conservative conference attendees. Oh, what a big shocker. But you'll see how delusional these people are in a minute. A group of leftists aggressively harassed and attacked attendees of the Colorado Christian University Centennial Institute's Western Conservative Summit in downtown Denver on Friday. Well, there's a group of Nazis for you. One video posted by the blaze, Elijah Schaefer, and shared by freelance journalist Andy Nell, shows a protester pushing a person walking to the West, Western Conservative Summit. F you, the protester who was repeatedly tied to leftist goof and teeth, has said in the video, you want some, you want some, he echoed as he shoved the attendee. You better back your A up. Uh, back inside, loser, another person can be heard repeatedly shouting off camera. Your man came over and effed with him. A third man said, defended the shoving, watch your man and shut the F up. He instructed attendee who was attending to resolve the situation. It's, um, well, let's show part of it. Well, I'm going to have to turn down the sound a little bit here, I think. Sorry about that. This is this is the new Democrat Party, folks. You're saying, John, come on. Most Democrats, most everyday Democrats and elected Democrats, they don't act like this. This is an exception to the rule. You know how they get away with it? Because Democrats allow it to happen. Allow it to happen. And by saying nothing, it's condoning it. And even agreeing with it can, it can be implied. Well, about during the 1930s as the Nazis came to power, they were afraid of them, so they let them go. And what happened there? The ironic part is the deflection here that's going on is so amazing. They're screaming and hollering and shutting somebody else's freedom to move around and freedom of speech while calling them Nazis at the same time. Unbelievable. Let's, let's move on. I think you get the idea. A man named Leon would not give his last name like Sherry said. <laughs> oh, my God. These people are such whack jobs. And said that he's somewhere between 20 and 40 years old. Okay. Who cares? Told the Washington Examiner that he was first and foremost protesting that a place like this, the Hyatt in downtown Denver, lets a conference like this happen. It accepts money from these sorts of people. Ooh. They're known Nazi sympathizers. They sit at the tables with people like the Proud Boys. Yeah, I mean the racist Proud Boys, that many of them are non-white. What an idiot. You know, it's the problem. They're speaking the same language, English, but they're using a different dictionary. So how the hell do you communicate? Well, you can't. Which is part of the point, I guess. Another member of the group who refused to give, give a name said, "Yeah, it's you know if you're so you're so gung ho about what you believe in, why don't you give your name?" This is called a frontier freedom, but y'all are on stolen indigenous land. Yeah, here we go, and it's on Juneteenth, and I particularly find that distasteful. Well, if you're on stolen indigenous land, then why the f are you there? How about your family in the area? How about you? You're going to give up your apartment, maybe your house, or where you live? Uh, no, you're not. At one point, there was a brawl from an outside outsider started to film the demonstrators, and one man knocked his phone out of his hand. Well, let's see if we can do this. <laughs> I'm going to take down the sound a little bit. I don't want you guys to... Oh, what a good idea. Let's, let's watch this again. I'm telling you, honestly, I am not calling for violence. I am not calling for violence by anybody against one another. But it gets to a point where decent conservative people 
that have values are going to say, enough of this effing stuff. I am not encouraging anybody to commit violence. I wouldn't do that. Not because YouTube will ban this video or throw me off. It's because I believe it's wrong. But these people have to be confronted. Enough is enough. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Sorry about the loudness there. You can't turn down the sound without starting the video. And here we go. Now, this one's a little shorter. Oh, there goes his phone. The guy was filming. He took his phone and smashed it. Yeah, he's pissed. I would be too. There's three, four, five hundred dollars gone from this a hole. Enough's enough. Where's it going to be his restitution? This is what happens. Allies then Tifa chapter can be heard shouting in the background. This is what happens when you don't think like us. That's what happens when you don't bend the knee and kiss my ass. I like that. Flipping them off. Being led by a very large woman on a megaphone. <laughs> Elijah Schaefer, I believe, was on Tim Pool a couple of times. Antifa Command Hotel guests sympathetic with their cause to pee on the floor of the hotel because they host Nazis. <laughs> yep, pee on the floor. These are the people MSNBC calls heroic. That's right. Now, here's the thing. Normally, under normal circumstances, pre-internet, pre-social media, or at least early social media, this would be all over the place. On cable news, especially on Fox and other uh, venues. But there's a blackout from this kind of thing from about 80 to 90% of the mainstream media. And nobody's really seeing this. But the locals see it. Now, here's the thing. You would think, being a normal human being, that you would stop voting for people that allow this to happen. Not only allow it, encourage it, and sometimes pay for it. And they vote him in again. You know what? It gets to a point where you say, the hell with it. And you get the hell out of these cities in these blue states. I was visiting Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. Stayed there for a week, went and saw some family in Virginia Beach on the way back home to upstate New York. And Tennessee was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. The people are so different here in upstate New York and in a lot of blue states. I'm going to hold back and say they're not better for now because I don't think the people in Tennessee have been through the, the the grist mill, like the people in blue states up here in New York, in upstate New York have. But they're a lot different. They're polite. They're mannerly. They're civil. You, you pull over your car uh, in a small town in Tennessee or a lot of the south, you'll get two or three cars that will pull over because they think you're broke down and you need help. A tree goes down in your front yard. I've seen it happen. I know people that have talked about it. A tree goes down in your front yard from a storm. The next morning, 8 o'clock, there's three or four guys with chainsaws knocking on your door. Hey, can we help you take this, take this apart? For free, I might add. It's amazing to me. The protests were reportedly organized via a Facebook event page, and flyers were also passed around the country. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't that how Parler got thrown off the air? For organizing violent activity? Fight the right, build the left, Nazi scum off our streets. Get organized and fight. Join us on Zoom. Oh, so Zoom lets them too, right? Oh, God. Our general approach is to outnumber and outshine the far right. <laughs> outshine is in what? Better behavior? Better talking points? We want to send these worms back in their holes, demoralized and isolated. They are the minority. They're running things right now, or they're being allowed to. Until these people in these bigger cities, especially like in Portland, who turn around and voted for the mayor again. You know what? I have no sympathy for them. And it wasn't even a close vote, like, like 51-49. You know what? You reap what you sow. And I'm sorry that some of these families have children. They're going to have to be indoctrinated in school, 
and live in fear as they walk home from school or play outside their house. Because who knows what kind of dumbass is going to be protesting. The event will feature two days of fiercely jubilant opposition to the Western Conservative Summit. Fiercely jubilant. Oh, okay. I guess he must have uh, read a dictionary lately. According to the summary, which it calls a far-right gathering in a breeding ground of fascist networking and propaganda. (laughs) We must fight fascism now, or we are doomed to fight a stronger version of it in the future. He's met specific specifically states calling for additional partners to get involved. You know what, guys? They'll lose in the end. I like that. This is my favorite one here. Flipping them off, being led by a very large woman on a megaphone. <laughs> very large. He didn't say fat. He said very large. Well, let's, let's, let's get a little bit of this. Sorry about that, but I had to turn that up to... And look at the people in the background laughing. Laughing. They think this is a joke. Oh, they're flipping the bone. They bang on the windows. I mean, you got to be kidding me. This is amazing stuff. Proud of yourself. Proud of yourself. I mean, that's narcissism at a whole new level. Are these people going to win in the end? No. But when they do lose, when the Republicans and conservatives, the average people walking around say, you know, enough is enough, and they eventually lose at the ballot box as well as in public hearts and minds, how much damage to the country is going to be permanent? I don't know. If I had that kind of smarts, I would, I would be a multi-gazillionaire. But there it is, folks. Some of our, some of our great progressive Democrats fighting for the American way. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.